Hi, welcome back to Wendell Wordworks. I'm Danielle. If you've been wanting to try to scroll saw but haven't wanted to make a huge investment, you might have asked yourself if you could get away with a cheaper saw. In my opinion, when it comes to being successful at the scroll saw, it's all about the blade. So if you've ruled yourself out from projects because you don't think you have the right scroll saw, watch this. These are all done using my $200 Porter Cable scroll saw. No, I would not call it the most amazing scroll saw out there, and yes, I would love to upgrade to the $1,000 Pegasus at some point. But if you're just a hobbyist and you're not even sure what you would enjoy, but you want to try it out, it is possible to do intricate cuts on a cheaper saw. I believe it all comes down to what blade that you use. Cheaper saws will come with pinned blades, but if you want to make small or intricate cuts, you need a pinless blade. The pinned blades are just too big and too aggressive, and they're not gonna fit through small pilot holes to make your small inside cuts. I've had a few people reach out to me who think that their saw will only take the pinned blades, but that's not true. Even if it comes with pinned blades, it will take the pinless blades. But because these saws are cheaper, they will tend to vibrate more, which can make the pinless blades want to slip out and become an issue. So if you stick around to the end of this video, I will show you how I have gotten around this issue. First, let's talk best blades. There are a ton of different blades out there and it can feel very overwhelming. I'm not going to do a deep dive of all the differences of the types. I'm just going to cut right to the chase of my favorite blades that I found work the best for me. I would say the vast majority of the time I go for a double reverse tooth blade and this just means that the teeth are pointed both down and up and in pairs which makes for a smoother cut. Modified geometry blades are also fantastic. They too had the reverse teeth, but they also have bigger gaps in between the teeth, which causes less friction. This will make your wood less likely to burn and your blade less likely to break. Modified geometry blades are kind of like the goats of the scroll saw blades, but because they're more expensive, I really only go for them when I'm cutting through hardwood or really thick materials. When it comes to numbers, the low numbers have the most TPI or teeth per inch, and those blades are gonna be used on the smallest materials. The bigger the number, the less TPI, the less teeth per inch, and those blades are gonna be for thicker material. I think a number five blade is a great place to start. If it's cutting too slow or doesn't seem to keep up, then you need to size up your blade. If it's cutting too fast or inaccurately, then you need to size down. Now back to the problem of your blade slipping. Step one, just make sure that the, all the factory oil is off. This can either be done with just uh, sandpaper or a quick sawdust rub. Just make sure it's not slippery. Step two is just to loosen the tension. I got incredibly frustrated a while back because my blade kept slipping and I finally figured out that it was because my tension was just too tight, even when I didn't feel like it was. On my saw, you loosen the tension with this lever at the top. You open it and I turn it all the way to the left. Make sure it's completely loose before putting my blade in. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bottom in and tighten it up. You might be tempted to really crank on it to tighten it, but you don't wanna do that because over tightening can actually damage the screw and make it looser over time. Just make it so it's tight. Do the same with the top. And then when I close it back down, I wanna make sure it's really loose. So it's not pulling my blade up. It's not making it pop out. Okay, now I'm gonna tighten it by turning it to the right by hand until it's just tight enough to give you that nice dink sound. Don't overdo it. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on and give a test run before I start. It was vibrating too much, we wanna stop it and make the tension a little tighter. All right, yes, it's vibrating a lot, but actually for my saw, that's good. <laughs> so this is good, this is gonna hang in there. Like I said, if it's vibrating too much, especially if you bring your material to the wood and you feel like, oh, it's going really wonky, Stop it, tighten it by hand here. But for me, I think the key is making sure it's loose at the beginning because if it's tightened too much before you put down this lever, it'll just pop it right out as soon as you start and that can be so frustrating. If for some reason you're still having trouble getting your pinless blades to stay in your scroll saw, Pegasus does sell a $90 head that you can replace yours with. It's still an expense, but much cheaper than buying the $1,000 scroll saw, especially if you're new to it and you're just trying to figure out 
if you even like scrolling. But once you figure out the right blades, scroll sawing is so fun. When you can make good cuts, the options just seem endless. So I hope this is helpful to you guys. I'm going to post all of the blades that I use in the description below. So you can scroll through Amazon, try them out, and the more you do it, the more you're gonna know exactly what blades you need and the more success you're going to have. So happy scrolling, bye.